Welcome to repairing a Stuart Sun steam engine. This is part two, and in this part, I'm going to show how I make the base. And the first thing I do is get a piece of mild steel and spray it satin black. I should really use engineer's blue, which is what you use for marking out pieces of metal. The general idea is spray some paint or engineer's blue onto the piece of metal, and then when you draw around the component that you're wishing to copy, you can see the scribe line clearly. What I'm needing to do here is draw around the existing component and mark all the positions of the holes at the same time. And without the engineer's blue, or in my case, satin black paint, a silver line on a silver piece of metal will be very difficult to see. And I only want to do this once. So here you see me drawing around the component. I know this is not really good engineering practice, and I'm really sorry about this, but this is the way I do it. I don't have an engineer's brain, sadly, I have a musician's brain. And my musician's brain says, why not just draw around the original damage component and transfer all the dimensions to the freshly painted piece of steel plate? It would be nice if I could get a part from Stuart Models for this, but I don't think they do them for these old engines. And besides, the part will be much stronger, made from a piece of mild steel. So after marking all the positions of the bolt holes, it's over now to the drilling machine to drill the holes. I'm using a centre drill, and from experience I can actually see a spot on a piece of metal and put the centre drill where I need it to be. If you're unsure about drilling the holes this way, a better method is possibly to use a magnifying glass and use a centre punch and punch the holes manually before putting the drill near them. But as I've just said, I've been doing this for a long time and I just know where to put the drill. I don't always get it right though, I'd love to say of course I get it right, but no, sometimes I drill the holes in the wrong place. And once upon a time, when I first started with metalwork, I would often make three components before I got one of them right. But I must have improved with age, because these days I do seem to get it right first time a lot more than I used to. So with smug mode engaged, I'm carrying on, with much confidence, drilling the holes in the metal plate. As you see on the metal plate as I'm drilling it, I have not yet marked out the position of the other two lugs. So all I did was turn over the component, which gave me an extra two lugs to play with, and I drew round those and marked out the centres of the holes. This in reality was not a brilliant idea, because to my surprise, the original positions of these lugs were not 100% accurate. I should have done it a little bit more carefully if I'm perfectly honest, but by doing a bit of careful reprofiling of the part, it worked out fine in the end. This clip shows me removing the cylinder cladding. I'm being very careful with the screws because I don't want to drop them on the floor and I put them in a safe place so that when I put the engine back together, I know where they are. This piece of aluminium is probably not the original part for the engine. It does the trick, but it's not profiled very neatly. So what I'm going to do is use my little drum sander in my Minicraft drill to trim the part so that it fits a little better. If you find yourself having to do a job like this and you've not done this kind of a thing before, Always remove very little metal, and then check the fit of the modified part. Don't go for a big grab on the metal, otherwise you might find you've taken too much metal away. You can take the metal away, but you can't put it back very easily. Watching this video, which is speeded up, should give you some idea of how many times I actually take a little bit of metal off, then try the part back on the engine, before removing a little bit more metal, and getting a good fit in the end. With the cylinder cladding in a safe place, it's time to have a quick look at the engine and decide on a colour scheme. This engine was originally green, Stuart green, so I think I'm going to do it Stuart green again. So it's into a bath of cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinners as I'm reliably told the Americans call it, to remove the paint. This cellulose thinners quickly removes the paint and then it's ready for painting and finishing. This part of the job will be covered in the third and final episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.